Hey, this is Guy from New Plastic, and today I'll show you how to cut your render times by half. This applies only to animations and only if you have NVIDIA cards. Basically, it's an app called DayNap that uses AI calculations to interpolate extra frames uh, from your rendered footage. So basically, you can render your animation twice as fast. So you're rendering half of the frames and then uh, let the DayNap make all the frames in between. I use it all the time. So I'm going to show you how I use it and how I easily fix one issue that sometimes pops up. By the way, you can still use the 30% discount code on my store. Code is in the description. Also, go check out my Patreon if you want to support the channel. You'll get free products, discounts, tutorial project files, and my own personal project files, and exclusive materials, and early access to videos. Most importantly, you'll get to directly support this channel and help it grow and get better. Shout out to the five patrons, Spencer Clark, Abhishek Singh, Elad, 3D Monkey Biz, and Marcus Arnold. You guys are pioneers and are literally a part of this channel, so thank you. You can follow me on Instagram at Ojang, subscribe, comment, share, hit the bell. You already know the rules, but let's go. So first you gotta go to this website, um, grisketitchy.io. I'll put the link in the description. You can pay 10 bucks for it. And I, I suggest you do, but you can also download it for free here. Uh, and you can also check out his new Rife app, which pretty much does the same thing, but it uses less resources. So uh, it's kind of easier on your system. This uh, program uses a lot of VRAM. We'll get into it in a second. So once you downloaded it, extract a zip, place it in your program files or wherever you want. Go to the folder, double click the exe file or right click it and run as an administrator, which is what I need to do. Otherwise it won't work. Once you open it, you'll see this interface. I'm using version 0.039. Yours might look slightly different, but they're all looking pretty much the same. Now, this is the video I'm going to use for this example. It's a render I made for some video. It's pretty cool, but let's say I want to slow it down. So first thing you're going to do is you're going to click the input files and select your video. Then you'll click the output folder and it's going to automatically select the location of your input file. Just choose your desired folder and hit select folder. And I used a video input, but here you can select whether you're inputting a video or a sequence of PNGs or resuming a stopped render. Then the next tab shows you the input FPS of your input video and output FPS uh, it'll have, which basically shows you how much it'll stretch the video. Automatically it sets it at two times interpolations, but you can choose uh, four or eight times. I usually cap it at two, but the four and eight work surprisingly well. Right here you can choose if you're inputting a render 3D video or live footage or a 2D animation. For our purposes, we'll always choose real life or 3D. And you can also select different interpolation speeds here if you really need to. Okay, next tab, I just use the default settings and same with the MISC tab. Pixel art tab is only for pixel art and the fix out of memory tab is super important. So this app, as I say, uses super high amounts of VRAM. And unless you have over 20 gigs of VRAM, your GPU just won't be able to do this. So to help you with that, you can choose one of these options. Uh, the downscale video option simply reduces the side of your video. I don't use that because I want to keep the same render size. So I use the split frames option, which basically splits the video into smaller portions and then stretches them and then stitches them together. For me, it always works perfectly. And if your car still fails to render, you just increase the amount of divisions. The next tabs don't really matter and I have no idea what the beta options really mean, but they don't matter to me. Um, so after the setup, you click the perform all steps button right here and you'll see the progression in this uh, terminal window. This can take a while. These six seconds took around uh, 20 minutes. And once you're done, you'll get a pop up telling you. So let's go to the folder and check out the video. So this is the original video. And in the new folder, you'll have three folders one with a sequence of all the frames, including the new interpolated frames. So you can see we have double the amount of frames. Second is just the original frames. And third is the final output as an MP4. And if we play that, look how extremely smooth and perfect it is. This is a game changer. Instead of like a rendering engine using insane lights and shadow and depth calculations, it's simply spitting out pixels from looking at other pixels. And it's almost perfect. And I use it all the fucking time. Okay, so let me show you another example and how I fixed the only real issue this app sometimes has. So I had this animation I made and I wanted some parts to play a bit slower, but going back to the animation and retiming everything between certain like exact frames would have taken me literally days. So all I did was render out the exact parts I wanted to slow down. Here's one very short. And here is the other again, very short. Then I passed them through uh, the day nap and this is how they looked after being stretched. 
this one is perfect, but this one had some uh, artifacts on the background. Flat backgrounds can get a bit glitchy with the Dana, probably because they don't have enough detail for the app to interpolate well. So after stitching together the video with the new stretch parts, it felt way better to me and saved me literally days of work and render time. And the only thing I had left to do was to fix the background issue, which is really easy. When that happens, I just import the unstretched animation. I drag it under the stretched animation in the sequence and let's just isolate these layers. Then I use After Effects uh, default time stretch to match the length and that usually doesn't look good, but we're going to isolate that background part so we don't see the usual stutter effect caused by this time stretch. Then I'll select the Dane stretch layer and mask that glitchy part out. I'll feather the mask and set it at subtract mode. Then I'll keyframe the mask into the frame right before the glitch starts. and I'll keyframe it out of the frame right after the glitch ends. And now it's perfect. And I know what you're asking, but guy, what if I don't want to change the speed of my animation? It seems like all it does is stretch my video. Well, it can stretch your video if you render your whole animation as is, but you can also tell Cinema to render every other frame and then let Dayknapp fill in the gaps of the missing frames. That way it won't affect the speed and you end up rendering only half of your animation. To do that, simply go to your render settings and in the output tab, change the frame step to two. That way Cinema will skip every other frame. So it will only render frames zero, two, four, six, etc. Or if you want to cut your times by four you can input frame step four then it'll only render every other fourth frame and then you can use the four times interpolation on the day nap and you guessed it you can also render every other eighth frame select the eight time interpolation on day nap and cut your render times by eight obviously it won't be as smooth as the two times interpolation but it's an option so yeah that was just a quick uh, tip on something i use all the time it saves me hours and even more of render time and you should definitely incorporate it into your workflow as well now go check out the Patreon, see if you like it. If you do subscribe, support, you're awesome. I love you. Have a great day. Peace.